starting out monitoring with Prometheus. So for those of you who may not be as familiar with Prometheus, giving a quick overview here. So Prometheus is essentially a single binary metric solution out of the box. It's completely open sourced and um, part of the CNCF. It comes with a tag-based metric ingestion format, uh, as well as a native query language called PromQL. It uses, um, it is a scrape-based or pool-based metric ingestion solution. And um, it also is very efficient at metric storage. So uh, meaning that it's really good at just storing metrics within inside the instances themselves. It also has a proprietary or built-in kind of way to visualize and graph metrics. Many people that use Prometheus opt, usually opt for um, Grafana to kind of fulfill these needs, but Prometheus does have its own solution for that as well. And then finally, um, Prometheus does allow for you to kind of um, kind of aggregate your metrics through something called um, Prometheus recording rules. And it also allows you to create alerts on your metrics through the Prometheus alert manager. So as you can see, Prometheus has really risen in popularity over the past few years, kind of becoming the de facto um, open source metrics monitoring tool. Uh, and then kind of, you can see it kind of quickly surpassing Graphite as um, kind of as that leader in the space. And this is mostly due to some of these key advantages we'll talk about here um, with Prometheus. So the first one being that it's very easy to get started. And this is because it basically just has two single binaries, one for ingestion, storage, and querying, and then in the second binary that's used just for alerting. So really easy to get started out of the box. Um, in addition, it is the CNCF recommended monitoring tool. Um, so this means that, uh, and this, this is mostly due to the kind of um, widely accepted um, exposition format that Prometheus uses, as well as um, the query language PromQL, which I mentioned earlier, which has been like very um, widely adopted. Um, on top of that, it has a very dynamic and um, wide range of endpoint discovery mechanisms. So, um, so it makes it really easy to use on any platform you're running, including Kubernetes, which obviously is very popular and very widely used. Uh, and this also makes it really easy to integrate and start discovering any particular kind of metric client and endpoints to pull or scrape metrics from. And then finally, it has a wide range of um, kind of exporters, so, or kind of integrations. And these, um, you, they have these um, listed on the Prometheus documentation, but basically there's over 200 kind of official um, existing integrations. And these will be found across most major software projects, especially the open source ones. And then there's also lots of unofficial ones that you can use as well. So getting started with Prometheus, um, this kind of diagram here shows a very basic setup. Um, but basically what we're seeing here is we have our three services, A, B, and C. They're all being scraped by the single Prometheus instance here. And then, you know, um, as mentioned, you know, we do have most people do choose to use Grafana for any dashboarding or visualization. So you can have a, an instance of Grafana kind of pointing to your Prometheus instance for those purposes. And then the same on the alert manager side, um, if you wanted to kind of have any alert against your instance. Okay, so that kind of gives you a good overview of what Prometheus is and kind of um, some of the advantages and why it's so popular. But now we'll get into some of the kind of limitations or pain points that you might experience when wanting to really scale out um, to a large size, like kind of your Prometheus setup. So the first pain point we're gonna discuss is gonna be around reliability. So in this example here, we have one instance of Prometheus scraping service A. So in, you know, like, let's say all of a sudden in this Prometheus instance goes down. Um, so this is not great because not only do you lose any of that kind of active or real-time uh, monitoring of your service A here, but you also lose any kind of historical data that had already been scraped and kind of stored into your Prometheus instance. So obviously this is kind of a major point of failure with this particular setup. So 
the suggested way to kind of get around this is to have a second Prometheus instance tied to your service so that, you know, in case one of them does go down, that you do have a backup um, copy of your data. So this is also applies to alerting since alerting is also a single binary, you would have kind of um, make sure you'd, you'd still have kind of one, one instance of your alert manager here tied to each of your Prometheus instances. And in this example, you know, if you know, you are having two alert manager instances here, but they will talk to each other. So um, you won't get duplicate alerts. So this is kind of like the suggested workaround. Um, and that can be, you know, that that can work for some people. However, the problems come with in this scenario when you are wanting to start viewing your data on a dashboard, like in Grafana, for example. Um, so in this example, if you were wanting to do that, um, you would need to then put a load balancer in front of your instance of Grafana in order to kind of balance any pre requests across your two Prometheus instances. Um, so this can generally work for for kind of reliability uh, in terms of like you're going to no matter what, as long as your instances are staying up, you'll get at least one copy of your data to fulfill any of your query requests. Um, the problem with this, though, is that if you're doing kind of a rolling restart of either or, you know, kind of any of your Prometheus instances for any reason, whether it kind of being um, for kind of upgrade purposes um, or something along those lines, then that's where the problems arise. So um, looking at this example here, kind of we have two charts, um, each representing one of the two Prometheus instances from the previous slide. And, you know, let's say we did rolling restarts on each one and um, which you can kind of see by the like the gaps in um, data across both of the charts here. So um, as you can see, like when you do perform like a rolling restart, you will have a gap in data because that's, you know, the, during that time, your Prometheus instance will be down. So this can present problems when you are wanting to perform any query or dashboarding on your on your instances, because um, when with the load balancer, basically um, you're going to basically get either one copy of your data or the other as a, as your result. Um, so this can lead to really inconsistent results because you're not really going to get um, kind of that full that full that full story or that full picture of what's going on. Um, and unfortunately, there is no, uh, I guess, out of the box solution to uh, resolve this and kind of merge your two sets of data. So the second uh, main pain point that we're going to cover is around scaling. Okay, so now we're going to get into a second pain point that you might uh, experience when um, kind of setting up Prometheus or using Prometheus, and that's going to be around scaling. So in this, in this diagram here, we have our three services um, all being scraped by a single instance of Prometheus. And let's say uh, all of a sudden service A just starts generating a lot more in, a lot more metrics um, and it is going to start, you know, overwhelming your single instance of Prometheus. So in instead of like kind of letting that proceed and having your, your instance kind of oom, the recommended workaround is to basically have a second or separate instance spun up to basically scrape um, and address metrics from that particular service that may be um, all of a sudden having a lot more um, you know, load of metrics. So, uh, so yeah. So basically, this is what that would look like. And you know, from here, you are able to kind of um, you know point different instances of like alert band or Kana to your various instances to kind of um, for querying or dashboarding alerting purposes. However, the problem with this is now like you really are only going to get um, kind of, you're only going to be able to see like one copy or like one um, data source at a time when looking at your various kind of Grafana or alert manager requests. So the limitation with this is kind of, is, is that. So, um, so if you are wanting to kind of have a single source of truth and kind of be able to dashboard or query or even alert against kind of, um, all of the all of your data and metrics coming from all of your services, then then it is recommended to kind of have a third node spun up, and this is done through a process of federation. So basically, by having this third node, uh, Prometheus node, it is going to be taking a subset of metrics from your two original instances of Prometheus and kind of having a place that has kind of a subset of of metrics across all of your services that you can query from or alert off of. Um, 
as you can see in this example here. So um, that's, you know, all great in terms of like, um, all good and great in that, you know, you're now able to have like that single point to query off of and dashboard against. However, um, as I mentioned, this third instance is really only still gonna have that subset of metrics. So let's say if you did, if, if what the, the kind of data you were looking for is not in that subset, you will have to then kind of point your, or reroute your, you know, Grafana or alert manager instances to the appropriate Prometheus instance that may have that, the data that you're looking for. So this requires kind of that management overhead where you need to remember or know where all of your data lies in terms of like which instance has which data, um, which data points. So uh, obviously this can be manageable if you have kind of a smaller setup, but as you start to scale out, this becomes a lot more um, challenging and hard to manage. So as you can see here, like, you know, we're kind of having these two zones, these two buckets of, of metrics um, kind of being scraped by these various uh, Prometheus instances here. And in order to kind of get that global view, you basically have to continue the federation process um, down each tier that we have here. And so um, kind of going back to how I was explaining kind of having to manage that overhead in terms of where all the metrics lie. Now this becomes a lot more complicated because um, you know, with each federated node, you get a subset of metrics. And so it's gonna be a lot more difficult and challenging to really remember, remember and track where all of the metrics that you may be looking for, which, which instance they lie in, um, if you're looking for something specific and not just like a general overview. So that definitely uh, is one of the pain points with Prometheus as you scale up. And then the final kind of main pain point that we're going to discuss today is going to be around efficiency. So um, Prometheus by default is kind of not super efficient when storing longer term data. And this is mostly because there is no uh, built in down sampling capabilities. So for example, let's say you have one instance of um, one Prometheus instance and you're wanting to kind of store um, your metrics for six months at a 30 second resolution. Um, if you were able to downsample this to kind of store at a one hour resolution, you would really see this like kind of savings in um, capacity. So like much more efficient at storing kind of those metrics. Um, so that's just with one instance though. If you were to do this across hundred instances, now you can see that discrepancy is a lot larger. So um, kind of without having that downsampling, it really does limit the efficiency side of things when using Prometheus. And um, when, so kind of like the way to get around this with kind of the out of the box um, version of Prometheus is to kind of have um, one kind of uh, instance of Prometheus um, kind of having that data stored for six months at that 30 second resolution, and then kind of having a second instance for that, um, for that greater resolution period. And this obviously is not going to be the most efficient because now you have two data sources tied to a single service. So for example, in Grafana, like if you are wanting to query a dashboard against um, these metrics, you're gonna have to kind of flip between the two data sources. And so you won't have that single place of truth. All right, so just to kind of recap what we discussed around Prometheus and its limitations. Um, you know, from a reliability perspective, it's not really designed to handle these availability zone or region failures. And um, it also has kind of inconsistency with its high availability model. Uh, from a scalability perspective, you know, um, we kind of mentioned or talked about kind of the management overhead um, required when you are kind of continuously sharding these endpoints um, across nodes, also known as kind of federation. Um, and then in terms of efficiency, as we just discussed, you know, it's not the most efficient when storing these longer term data at higher resolutions, and that's because there is no downsampling um, capability. So Prometheus is definitely very aware of these limitations um, and, you know, they have intentionally decided not to kind of build out kind of um, solutions for, for these limitations because they really wanted to make sure that they remain a very easy to get started solution and offering, um, which they're so known for to begin with. So um, kind of in response to these limitations, they did kind of introduce this concept called remote storage. 
So remote storage is essentially just uh, made up of these capabilities to perform remote read and remote, remote write HTTP um, APIs. So, um, and this is where solutions like M3, Thanos, and Cortex come in because they are all um, remote storage compatible. So they are solutions that can be used to help kind of resolve some of these limitations that you might see when really scaling up your Prometheus setup.